And now it's time for under reactions, things that are going on around the league. Uh, and I want to start in New England. So lost in the Hunter Henry drama, the kickoff return touchdowns and another Kirk Cousins fourth quarter comeback was this. An absolutely brilliant performance from Mac Jones. Mac, incredible, shattering his previous career high with 382 yards. He threw two touchdowns, no picks, and made some absolutely gorgeous throws to keep New England in it. And I know this is New England, and success is measured in these, which I have none, and I don't wear jewelry. I don't, what, what human, what adult human doesn't wear jewelry? I just don't. Um, rings and wins, that's what it is. And even Max said all the right things after the game about not scoring enough points. And he said, I know that I personally need to be better, but I do think we need to appreciate collectively what what happened and the way that he played that night. And I think it's potentially more significant than the result because the Patriots are going to actually make any semblance of noise this year in the AFC. Mac himself is going to have to keep making throws like this. All right, let's take a look here. Wah, 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 wah. Number 10, McCorkle. McCorks it. And oh, what a gorgeous throw. Listen, and of course they'll need defense. They're going to need run game, play calling, all of that. And, and, and those will likely be their bread and butter, of course. But you're not beating teams like the, the juggernaut that is the Bills, um, who they face Thursday night, by the way. Oof or the, even the Dolphins and that speed and all they got, or the Chiefs. You, you don't beat and take down those squads when meaningful games happen without getting quarterback play like that. And I don't care that they lost to the Vikings. I don't care. I honestly feel more positively about the squad and Mac um, if he's able to like build off this performance going forward than I did before this game and before this loss. And of course they can't afford too many of those L's. Uh, here's how it looks right now. They're trying to creep back into the right side of this playoff picture. I do think seeing growth out of the quarterback spot, a little bit more important in the grand scheme of things. I don't think anybody knew, you know, New England was expecting huge things this year, but uh, Thursday Night Football, like I said, woo, against the Bills. And we know that he has not had a great time against those Bills, right? Is that wrong? I think that's right. Except for the win game where he didn't throw it. Oh, yeah. That's fair. That's, fair. that's actually fair. Uh, at Up and Adam Show with your thoughts there, guys. Let me know what you are thinking. Um, all right. I need to call myself out here because um, I've been underreacting to what's been going on in Tampa. I've been operating under the simple assumption that they have one Tom Brady and they have all of this talent and everything's going to be fine. And then Sunday happened. And there's clearly reason to be concerned about this team. There just seems to be, um, I'm not going to call it like discord, but they're disconnected, right? Brady v. Bowles, that's it. That's the marquee matchup here down there in Tampa. And maybe it's Bowles and the coaching staff maybe together. And the sequence at the end of the game really brought that ugly whitehead pimple up to a head. Like, it was not good. The, uh, yeah, and, and the ringer um, we have here, Shiel Kapati, Kapadia, summed this up perfectly, I thought. Here's what he tweeted. Bucks some of the worst clock management. You'll see game tied 17, 32 seconds left, three timeouts, short screen, first down, no timeout, blah, blah, blah. What a disaster. So... You're seeing the sequence here. I just like how he wrote this out. Um, but Todd Bowles was asked about it after the game, and here's what he had to say. You don't think about those things. As coaches, you make the best decision possible based on everything that's been going on, and you kind of go from there. We had not been moving the football. We had nine three and outs, so it wouldn't have been wise to try to call that one. So I made it. I can live with that, and I'm okay with it. So Bowles' logic makes sense, but this isn't uh, – any struggling offense. This is Tom Brady, and that is where he shines brightest. If you go three and out and a force to punt with 20 seconds left, you're probably headed to overtime anyway. You have the greatest quarterback to ever live and breathe and hate strawberries and only eat avocado ice cream. You have Tom Brady. You have to give him the vote of confidence and let him go win that game. So what's going on here? And between that and then there was this earlier um, fourth and two where Bulls decided to punt, you know it – it has to have Brady feeling some type of way. The good news is the Bucks still lead their mess of a division <laughs> at five and six. We usually have Mark Ingram on. We don't have him on today. We'll talk to him about the, the state of that division uh, at some point this week. But there's a fracture there right now. Tampa's running out of time to fix it and heal it and get the 
What is it? That just the super glue, the Gorilla Glue, the what's that stuff that you know? Keep this Flex Seal. Yeah. Flex Seal is real. Does that stuff work? Flex Seal. They need to get the Flex Seal. Call the one eight hundred number. Do you guys hear that? What's going on in my ear? Sounds like a plane is landing in my eardrum. Okay, well, we know, we know the Bucks have talent. We know that, and that's sort of what I was leaning on, erroneously. Uh, and I'm never really gonna give up. I don't think I can when Brady's involved. I just can't. But at some point, everyone's got to get on the same page in order to the flex seal. All right. Next thing that I think we collectively are underreacting to. So we give it love on Up and Adam Show. And please tweet us at Up and Adam Show. Let us know, or myself at uh, AK Adams, or at Rissy. What is it? What is it? Be my McBride. At Be my McBride. Okay, that's that's a little. Just, why is your why is your Twitter handle be my McBride? Like, be my bride. Be my like. Oh my god! Why did I never put that together? I'll change it to Rissy Minaj. I'll change it. Rissy Minaj. Yeah, Rissy Minaj is good. Be my McBride. Uh, the, literally, I'm sweating from commitment issues hearing you even put that out there into the universe. Be my McBride. It's like should be the most beautiful thing, and I'm over here dying about it. Okay, I'm allergic. Um, when it comes to the Niners. Let's get a clean cut for social media, ready? When it comes to the Niners, the past month has been all about Christian McCaffrey, his arrival, him and Debo, Shanahan, Kittle coming back and being healthy. Uh, and, you know, oh my goodness gracious me, whoa, horror, shock, how do we stop all these great players? And I think in the midst of that, we have underreacted to how good San Francisco's defense is. And Sunday's 13 nil, speaking of soccer, Julie Stewart being so like that. Uh, uh, the win over the Saints, which has to have something to do with why Mark Ingram canceled on us today. It's got to. A nil, like a nil showing, that's like a, <coughs> I'm sick, I can't do any, I can't come to the show today. You know what I'm saying? It's a little giving me those kind of vibes. Just giving me those Ferris Bueller's, my hands are clammy vibes. Um, okay, look at this. This is what I want to show. Because this, this was this game, right? The 49ers defense leads the league in scoring D, total D, run defense, and has forced the highest percentage of three outs in the NFL. Now, guys, this is not to mention they haven't allowed a single point in the second half since October 23rd. Do you know what our show looked like on October 23rd? It was like a totally different show. The world has changed since October 23rd. Nick Bosa is making a charge for Defensive Player of the Year. He's up to 11 and a half sacks this year. And can we talk about their safety, Hufanga? Oh my goodness, this guy needs to be a household name, and I think he is by, by now, right? Let me know how you guys feel. It isn't uh, just that he ranks third in the league, four picks this year. It's that every time you put on a game and watch, he is literally flying all over the field. Peter Pan, here and there, unreal. Uh, and I think he's really mainly the reason that shutout stayed intact. So if you look at even just, I don't know what I'm talking about, look at this play. Fly it into the, oh my God. He gets the ball loose from Kamara. Poor Kamara had such a bad game. Um, it preserves the shutout. Flying, flying! Locks up the Niners win. Um, fly Eagle. Is that what you're thinking? Fly. Da, 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 da. Uh, he da. He has absolutely, uh, Hufanga transformed a secondary that's been this defense's Achilles heel, let's be honest, over the past couple of years, playing at an absolute all pro level right now. So I know we're going to continue to look at all the flashy toys Shanahan has an offense, but D'Amico Bryans, woo! Keeping this defense playing this high, number one defense in the league, and I've been saying it, and I continue to say it, the Niners are going to be the toughest team to beat in the NFL. See. All right, those are my underreactions. What are yours as Darius Butler joins us to name a mayor of Shuddy Town.